In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Today is the first Sunday after the Epiphany. It is the day that we commemorate the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ some 2,000 years ago. The baptism of Christ was a momentous, life-changing experience for Christians. In the next few minutes, I would like us to reflect on that historic event as an opportunity to confess Christ and to rekindle the promises we made to God at our baptism. In today's Gospel, Luke tells us that our Lord Christ came to John to be baptized just like everyone else. From our human perspective, one may think that something is not right here. Jesus coming to John to be baptized. It is like the sinless going to the sinner for the confession of sins. We remember John's admission that he himself was inferior to the Messiah. Why then did Jesus himself offer himself to be baptized by John instead of the opposite? It has been said that it was part of our Lord's preparation for his ministry. Which is correct. It was also how our Lord Christ, through his baptism, demonstrated that we must be born again and become a new creature to experience a true relationship with God. I imagine for a moment the description of John, a witness, and compare him to the personality of Christ, who is God. Here was a man living in the desert, surviving on wild fruits and honey, and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Remember how harsh his words were? <coughs> so much the crowd, described as desperate, were frightened and terrified, and they came asking what they should do. The Gospel says, Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. One of the remarkable things about the baptism of Jesus Christ is the demographics of the people who were baptized along with him. Among them were tax collectors, but not to be confused with our uh, uh, IRS. private and public officials, and all manner of individuals who had recognized their need for repentance following John's preaching in the wilderness. John said, you must be baptized to escape the coming wrath of God. Well, biblical scholars have it that the Jews at that time believed that the pagans were the only ones who would face God's wrath in the final judgment. But John told them that everyone would face the last judgment, no exception to the rules. We also remember from the scriptures the cost of John's confrontation with Herod over his brother's wife. So baptism of repentance was the only way for sinners to be cleansed of their sins. John also made it clear 
that his form of baptism was different from the baptism that would come from Jesus Christ. He baptized with water, as important as water is to human life. Baptism with water comes second to what Jesus would baptize with, and that is the Holy Spirit by which he would cause those who believed in him to share in the new life that he would bring. A life of righteousness, a life of love, a life of respect and justice toward all men. During the baptism of Jesus, specific events took place as was recorded in the scriptures. Scripture says, as Jesus was praying, the heaven was opened, the Holy Spirit came up, uh, upon him, came down upon him in a bodily form like a dove. This was a strange event. At that point, an event that was outside of normal reality was happening. Then a voice said, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. <coughs> this event meant the baptism of Jesus to be like no other. <coughs> he was given an identity. He was the focus of God's love. He was very pleasing to God. He was physically given God's Holy Spirit. And he became part of a new group, those who belonged in the household of God. At baptism, we receive the same gifts and recognition as our Lord Christ. We receive the gift of water. We are given an identity. When our name is announced, it is followed with those immortal words. But I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And thereafter, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. Then, to complete the process of our immersion, we are received into the household of God. This is priceless. It can't get any better. Thus, we become new creatures with a new identity, children of God, and we enter a covenant with Christ both as individuals and as members of a community of believers. In the same way that God announced that Jesus is beloved, we are announced as beloved. We are given the gift of God's spirit. We are given a community. We join with the people present at our baptism who are baptized and with everyone else who was ever baptized. Yes, we come from different backgrounds, cultures and traditions but we know that God loves us just the same because we confess the same Christ. Dear church community, the baptism of Christ is not without reward and responsibility. We have been baptized in his name with water, but when he comes, he will baptize us with the Holy Spirit. And while we wait, we have nothing to fear about the unquenchable fire that Luke talked about. Because we count among the wheat and not among the chaff. <coughs> we are the wheat, not the chaff, because we confess the Christ, because we share in the same baptism. At our own baptism, we are given a name and a new life in Christ. 
we make a covenant with God. Prayers and petitions are said to God on our behalf. We are then sealed forever with God's spirit. By the singular act of our baptism, the light of Christ is ignited in our hearts and minds. By our baptism, we are given a charge, a commission, like the one given to the apostles, to be the light of Christ to the world. By our baptism, we make the covenant to confess Christ and to advance his gospel of love to all people. This is the invitation that the Lord extends to us, especially on this day, the anniversary of Christ's baptism. The most precious gift we can share with him on this occasion is to confess him with courage and conviction and to pray. As we ask God in the words of today's collect to grant all who are baptized into his name that they may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior. Amen. Please stand and turn to